By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back in Tilburg, the Netherlands, for round number five of The Edge Man. And in round five we have a very exciting match for you. We have a white blue Psychic Venom deck piloted by Elon taking on French player Clovis who is playing with a UR counterburn strategy. So two really good decks. They've been performing really well here at the tournament. I think uh, both players haven't lost a single match. So uh, this is quite exciting seeing these two players going face to face. And I think the winner of this event will, uh, or the winner of this round, I should say, will continue to the finals where they can win the event. Yeah, that's the order of things. I gotta, I gotta stick to the right order here. So it's a pretty big match. The winner here will probably go to the finals. So the way this tournament is organized, you have uh, five rounds. In, uh, in the Swiss and then you just have a final so round six is basically the finals of the event now before I start with the deck deck section of this video I've got beautiful deck pictures of both of these uh, players I would first like to point out that as always you can also choose to first check out uh, the match go back to the deck decks later I know some people prefer to do it that way the easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below there you will find several timestamps one of the timestamps reads MTG games just click on there It'll take you straight to the games and in that uh, beautiful description below you can also find more information about the tournament and you can find a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page because yes I have my very own Patreon program. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks to find out more about that and to find out how you can support the channel financially. So please take a moment to have a look at patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. Okay and now that you're fully informed I'm going to continue with the deck decks. Going to start with the deck of Elon. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Elon. So this is blue and white, right? Really your traditional control color. And um, what I thought when I he heard that he was playing blue white, I'm like, okay, we're just going to have this standard deck, you know, of blue white. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's not that exciting. But then I looked at the list here and I thought, ooh, this is interesting. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Now, first off, the creatures that are good, but you know, kind of what you would expect. You've got Savannah Lines playset, you've got Surrender Perfect playset as well, and then you've got three Sarah Angels. Now, this is a really good creature base for your deck, right? You've got your turn one Lions, you slowly work your way towards three mana, while well, slowly, in some cases, you can already drop a Surrender Perfect turn two, so that's not slow at all. And it's a three, four flyer, like those are insane stats for three mana. And then you have your Sarah Angel for five, that comes a little bit later, that's kind of your top end in the creature base. But what I'm more interested in is the rest of the deck, right? We're seeing four, um, what I really like, four Psychic Venoms. And Psychic Venom is a card that I loved as a kid. I mean, that art, that Cobra, it's just really cool. But the card itself is also useful. It's one of those cards where I think it has potential, but does it really have potential? You know, is there really a deck where it could shine in. Obviously, you want to combine it with Icy Manipulator or maybe some other tap effects, and that's exa exactly what Elon does here. Having your Power Sync and your Icy Manipulator, they go together quite well with Psychic Venom. Maybe it's good to first kind of look at the card in case you don't know what it does. It's one blue and one to cast for an Enchant Land that says whenever the uh, owner or controller taps the land for mana, they get two damage. So you play it on the land of your opponent. Whenever they use that land, they take two damage. If they have a City of Brass, it gets really fun because they take a damage from the Brass and then two damage from the Psychic Venom. So that's kind of like a dream scenario, right? And it's not that uncommon. A lot of players are playing with City of Brasses in their decks. So if you've got your Icy Manipulator, your Psychic Venom, and your opponent has a City of Brass, you can do a Lightning Bolt of damage every single turn, which is seriously pretty uh, huge, also considering the fact that Elon is playing with those creatures that I just talked about that are quite aggressive as well. He's also playing with two Psionic... Um, uh, psionic blasts also so he can he can deal damage with that as well so that's quite nice one blue and two for instant speed for damage you do also take two damage yourself but i mean those are those are really good you know so he's got multiple weapons and i think when you're looking at the decks that do fairly well in today's meta are usually the decks that have multiple plans of dealing damage a lot of those decks they have the strategy of just playing quick creatures deal quick damage with those finish it off with a lot of direct damage and I'm liking this strategy more. I think it's a bit more classy to try to kill your opponent, maybe with the Psychic Venoms as well. It's a, You need to think a little bit more, you know, for that strategy. So that's why I kind of like it more. When we're looking at this list, the rest of the list, um, there are a few one-offs, right? We only have one counter spell. We only have one Mana Drain. Well, that's restricted, so that makes sense. One Ancestral Recall, one Balance, and then also 
uh, one Armageddon. And that's quite interesting because you would think Armageddon and, and Psychic Venom is kind of a non-bow. But I kind of agree with Elon here that it's useful as a one-off. You know, if you time your Armageddon right, it can grant you the victory. Remember, he still has that very aggressive and, and strong creature suite in his deck as well, right? So sometimes you don't draw your Psychic Venoms or you don't really need them that much. And you can go for your Armageddon and dominate it with your one Sarah Angel that's already on the board when you've cast that, that Armageddon or your quick Surrender Befreed or something. So there could definitely be scenarios here where I can see that Armageddon being being very useful. Um, talking about cards that could be useful here, we also see two Wrath of Gods. So I think when we're looking at um, at this deck, Elon is expecting to encounter a lot of creature-heavy decks here. You know, three swords and two Wrath of Gods. It's really uh, heavy on the anti-creatures. Talking about creatures, we also have four Mistress Factories in here before I forget. It's almost an auto-include for most of the decks, but we also find it here in the list of Elon. So yeah, I'm looking forward to see this deck. I'm hoping, keeping my fingers crossed, Elon, that you can demonstrate Psychic Venom in action with the Icy Manipulator, preferably, like I said, on a City of Brass, but then we first need to find out if your opponent is playing a City of Brass. So let's take a look at the list of your opponent, Clovis. And here we see the deck of Frenchman Clovis. So this is really your counterburn deck. And this deck has been doing uh, very well here at the tournament. Uh, Clovis is not the only person playing with counterburn today. And I believe uh, all the players that are playing it are doing quite well. And for obvious reasons, like this deck gives you so many weapons to work with, right? You've got your aggressive creatures, Flying Man, Surrender Befreed. In this case, we also see two Suchis. Of course, your Mistress Factories. So you've got those, that aggressive um creature base and you can combine that with a lot of burn we see cyanic blast chain lightning lightning bolt fireball so as soon as you're on like what 12 against this deck trouble starts right because they can just mow you down with direct damage one of the issues with this deck though is that you can run out of gas and that's exactly where the restricted and power cards come into play right we see wheel of fortune we see time twister we see ancestral recall Time Walk, another good one if you've got enough creatures on the board, right? You can just have that extra combat step. Um, playing against this deck is tough. You know, ideally you would want to have some kind of life gain. If you do, the situation gets a lot better, you know, because this is definitely what I call a sprint deck, right? You just want to burn, 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 tap your creature sideways, try to kill your opponent as fast as possible. And the longer the game, uh, game takes, usually the better the chances are for the opponent, depending on the deck the opponent is playing. But, there is a pretty big but, um, because of those draw sevens, and of course, remember, he's also splashing black for Demonic Tutor Mind Twist, because of those cards, even when a game takes longer, you know, they can tutor for a Time Twister or a Wheel, you know, and just get a fresh seven again, burn you out. Or, you know, they've got that one Fireball inclusion, which I really like in this deck. So, if a game kind of drags on and you've got your opponent on, let's say, six or something, and you just cannot push through, but you also have your counter spells to kind of control the game, and of course that one mana drain. So you've got that going, you know, so you don't have to worry too much about dying yourself, but it's kind of like in this in this state of nothingness, right? You're both like top decking, then a fireball can give you the win, right? Because you've got a lot of lands probably accumulated on your board. So time your fireball, right? That can give you the victory. Talking about one-offs, we also see a one of Black Vice. Again, I like that because there will be situations where you maybe have a draw seven in hand and that black vice in hand. That means that basically that black vice is turned into an extra bolt in your deck, right? You play vice, then you do the draw seven. Then even if, if you're not finding any useful things in your hand, which probably you will with this deck, right? You'll find more burn. But anyway, you can pass the turn to your opponent and he's gonna take three damage regardless. You know, okay, yes, he could maybe play out an instant or something, but in most scenarios, he would take an extra three and usually against these decks, taking an extra three really, really pushes you over that, that point and, and gives you the game. So yeah, a very strong deck by Clovis. I'm not surprised that it's doing so well. And now that we've discussed both of the decks, this means one thing, we are ready for the match. Let's go. Game number one, here we go. On the right, we have Clovis, who I believe is on the play. He's playing a counter burn strategy, red and blue. And on the left, we have Elon with a blue and white deck. He's playing with four Psychic Venom, so I've called it Blue-White Venom. Let's take a look here. We see Clovis uh, taking a Mulligan, by the way. So starting with six, opening with the Batlands, passing the turn. So no uh, turn one Flying Man for him. Let's see what Elon can do for his first turn. Just a basic Planes passing. There is an Island into the Flying Man. So he's found an Island from the top, I uh, assume. Or the Flying Man, of course. Both is possible. And, ooh, 
there's a Psychic Venom on the Badlands. So Psychic Venom means every time he taps the land, he takes two points of damage. And of course, uh, Elon is also playing with, for example, Icy Manipulator and also uh, Power Sinks to kind of force uh, Clovis to, uh, to tap down his lands. There's another Mishra's Factory. And here, ooh, first two points of damage from the Venom. Gonna cast a Surrendip Afrit. He's gonna drop down to 18, exactly. I don't think he was on 19. So that's correct. Didn't take a single damage yet. Gonna pass the turn here. 19 for, uh, for Elon. Let's see if he has a solution to all those creatures. Like there's six potential damage coming in next turn. If uh, Clovis decide to an decides to animate the factory, passing the turn here. Makes sense, you know. If you're uh, in Elon's seat, if you have an answer, it's probably a Swords to Plowshares or a Disenchant, so you don't have to play those uh, in your own main phase. You can just pass a turn here to Clovis and uh, see what he's gonna do. There's another factory. It's quite good. He can now uh, attack, right? Pump it with the other one. So this could be seven damage, but I'm kind of expecting a Swords to Plowshares here. There's the pump, gonna make it three. Oh, he's just gonna take all the damage. He doesn't have an answer to this. This is catastrophic. I kind of expected him to have some kind of answer. There's a tap down, gonna go to 15. There's a chain lightning. He would drop to nine. Are we gonna see something of an answer here? I believe he's got mana drain in hand. Is that a mana drain? So he could, could decide to mana drain it. I think you kind of have to being so low, exactly. I mean, you don't want to do that. You don't want to use your mana drain on a chain, but you kind of have to. So now at least as one mana extra could play Mishra's Factory that he just uh, drew from the top exactly. With that mana extra could potentially play out a Sarah Angel that will be quite good on this board, but he's really in trouble after taking all that damage last turn. Ooh, Wrath of God. Yeah, this is perfect. Well, actually it's not that perfect. I'm very excited about the Wrath, but I shouldn't be because Clovis uh, still keeps his Mishra's factories. So, I mean, it's it takes care of two creatures. It's a two for one. It's not bad, but I mean, he's on 12. Probably Clovis is gonna attack here for four. Or play Ancestral Recall, also a good play, of course. Didn't have a land drop yet, so could go Ancestral Recall, land drop, animate the, the factory's attack for four, put Elon on eight. That's still a line he can follow. There's probably a land there in hand. There is a, a volcanic island there. And I have to say, if he's gonna use the, the Badlands again, that's like six damage already taken from that one Psychic Venom. That's really doing work. So gonna drop to 13. And he's just gonna attack with the one. He's not gonna pump it, it seems. So he's got another play to make. Time walk, yeah, that's perfect. And Elon is, is really in trouble. I mean, he's on 10, you know. This is this is really a, a, a problem for him. Now Clovis can attack for four more. Going to put him on six. Or maybe he's got better options. Who knows? Again, taking damage from the Venom. I love seeing the Venom doing so well, by the way. Anyway, four, dam four more damage in. Elon dropping to six. And there's the pass. And now Elon needs something good. I mean, a disenchant would kind of help. Right, I think that's step one. But also remember, uh, Clovis hasn't played a single counter spell yet, and he's playing a full playset and a mana drain. So it's going to be tough as well to kind of find the right timing to resolve the disenchants and the swords if he have if he has them in the first place. I mean, that's not a pretty big if. So Elon here thinking about making a play. And Elon, I believe, only playing with a single counter spell. And of course, that mana drain already has uh, used up the mana drain. What is he going to do? Tapping three? Are we going to see a Surrendip Afrit? I mean, a Surrendip is not bad. The problem is you're on six. So yeah, there's the Surrendip Afrit, the version from the Revised. We're going to see a counter spell, though, so it's not going to work. The only good news about this counter spell for Elon is that maybe if he has a disenchant in hand, he's got a, a small chance that he can actually resolve the disenchant. But uh, it's going to be really tough being on six here. 
There's another Batland, so now he doesn't need the Psychic Venom Land anymore, I think. Yeah, gonna animate both, gonna swing in for four, probably. There's the attack, so is he gonna animate here? He's gonna animate, now remember, it doesn't have Summoning Sickness, so it can uh, block and pump itself. I'm expecting a bolt here from, from Clovis. No, we're not seeing that, it's gonna take two, gonna go to four, then I'm expecting a Psyone Blast, there's the blast. Right, if Clovis would be willing to, to sacrifice basically his uh, Mishra's Factory on this exchange, you know that a uh, Psionic Blast is following. That's exactly what happened here. So game number one going to Clovis. Now both players are going to dive into their sideboards and we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So Elon on the play needs to win this. And I believe that the winner of this match will continue to the finals, which we of course will also show here on this channel next week. There's a Savannah line by Elon, so that's a pretty good start. There's a pass after playing that Volcanic for the Frenchman. Are we going to see a Bolt on the Lion? We just have to wait. There's a Tundra. There's the attack. Taking the damage. Going to go to 18. Ooh, Psychic Venom. I'm liking this Psychic Venom on the Volcanic. Remember the uh, Psychic Venom. Oh, there we go. Red Elemental Blast. I wanted to say remember the Venom did a lot of work in that first game. Even though Elon lost, the Venom dealt a lot of damage. So uh, Clovis is respecting the Venom with that Red Elemental Blast, playing a Mishra's Factory here, passing the turn. Elon playing an Island, passing the turn. I think I would have attacked her actually with the line, kind of offering a trade for the Factory, which I don't think Clovis would have taken. Then he would have dropped to 16. There's an Island. Passing the turn again, an Island with one of those stamps from the Old Man of the Sea group. That's the play group of Clovis. It's uh, located in The Hague. There's an Icy Manipulator. Passing the turn. No, or Are we going to see a Counterspell on the Icy? For a moment there, I thought you saw him tapping with his hand. I thought maybe he's going to play a Counterspell, but no, just taking his turn, drawing a card. Playing a land for turn, Bat Lance. And there's a Black Lotus. Okay, are we going to see a big turn? Mind Twist could be an option. Brain Geyser could be an option. What is he going to do? Cracking the Lotus, it seems. I mean, he's got that um, Badlands for Black. Of course, can make Black as well with the uh, Lotus. Yep, there's a Mind Twist. And he's losing a Mana Drain there, it seems, in two lands. That Mana Drain is huge, of course. There's the attack for... Nope, there's a Shatter. Wow, also taking care of the Icy Manipulator. It's looking bad for Elon in top decking mode and three cards still for uh, for Clovis. He's now going to attack with the line, going to put him on 16. Passing the turn. Elon needs some luck here. I'm really hoping to get to a 1-1 one -one here, but it's looking bad. There's a flying man. Is he going to swing in with the factory? No, he's not. He's going to keep that on blocking duty. There's a factory on the side of Elon as well. Passing the turn makes sense because you don't want to attack. He can block and pump uh, his factory now. So the flying man can fly over so I can deal damage. There's another island. I have to say these flying men are kind of impressive, you know. They're just really good at kind of, you know, slowly ticking away, like dealing damage to the opponent. And flying is a very good evasive uh, maneuver. Oh, look at this, Sarah Angel. Okay, forget what I said. Oh, but there's a quick Psionic Blast, though. Taking care of the Angel. And that means the Flying Man can, t can continue doing what it was doing, which is just dealing damage every single turn. There it goes again. Second damage dealt by that Flying Man. Elon on 18. Passing the turn here by uh, Clovis. Two cards in hand for Elon now, I believe. Can he find another Sarah or a Serendip? Tapping three, there's a Surrender Perfect, three, four flyer. That's quite good. Having one card in hand, but I think he's top decking pretty decent. Having that Sarah Angel and that uh, Surrender. So Clove is here, three cards in hand, attacking for one. It's gonna take the damage here because if Elon blocks and Clove also has a bolt, he can kill, or Chain Lightning, he can kill the uh, Surrender. So I think this is a good decision to just take the damage. Going to take a damage during upkeep as well, of course. He's now on 16. Could swing in for 3 and could put Clovis on 11. 
Let's see what he's going to do. It looks like he's got another play to make. It's a little bit in the tank, though. I mean, it is risky. Clovis having all his mana open, playing with a lot of counter magic. Could run into another counter spell. There's an Armageddon. Are we going to see counter magic? If not, Clovis is in serious trouble here. Remember, he plays with one Armageddon. Ah, that's unfortunate. There's the counter spell. But I think you kind of have to try it. If this would have resolved, it would have meant game probably for Elon. Clovis here dropping to 11 now. Needs to find a way to deal with the Surrendip. I mean, it's nice to turn the Flying Man sideways every single turn, but it's just one damage versus three damage from the Surrendip. Could, of course, consider keeping the Flying Man on blocking duty and then still make that play with uh, Lightning Bolt. Block and Flying Man, then Bolt on the Surrendip, if he has a Lightning Bolt, of course. Looks like he's going to tap the Volcanic, untapping it again, tapping the Badlands instead. What are we going to see? A bolt here on the lion. Ooh, blue elemental blast protecting it. Are we going to see a counter spell on this? No, another flying man. And only one more card in hand. It's going to tap some more. Wheel of Fortune. I'm liking this. And I think this is good news for Elon, right? After that mind twist, I thought, uh-oh, what's going to happen? But he's really back into it. And I think if you're Clovis, you're not really happy with uh, with the way this game has uh, panned out thus far. But now at least you've got a fresh seven. There's the City of Brass. Six cards in hand. There's a vice. Okay, there's that single vice that he's playing. So that's going to do some work. And the attack with the Flying Man. That means 15. Elon probably going to take three damage. You're going to drop to 12 from the vice. And of course, the damage from the Surrender. So 11. Ooh, that's pretty big. You know, he's taking four damage plus the flying man, five damage. That's quite a lot. I'm kind of rooting for Elon here, hoping to go to a game three, because it's really interesting to see these two decks going face-to-face. Uh, -face. There's another factory, so two Mishra's factories now. The problem are those flying men, and of course the Vice needs to kind of empty his hand here. Ooh, taking it back. What else is he going to do? Does he have a better option? So really in the tank, I believe he's got 8th in hand still. There we see a strip mine. Okay, that's interesting. Could strip, of course, the factory at a certain point. Tapping a blue, animating it. Ooh, he's going to play very aggressive. I like it. Turn it all sideways. There's a 2-2 two, two factory, 3-4 flyer, and 2-1. Gonna tap the City of Brass, take a damage, go to 10. Red Elemental Blast, taking care of the Surrendip, trading the Flying Man for the line, and taking 2, I guess. So gonna drop to 8. And now I wonder, is there going to be any action here in second main? 2 Moxon dropped. So okay, that means no more damage from the Vice, I think, so at least that's good work. Stripping the factory. Could have weighed it with that. I'm always kind of double about it because you, if you strip it now, um, Clovis doesn't have that extra mana that maybe he needs for something. But you can also wait until he's going to animate it and attack. Then again, is he going to animate and attack with it when you've got that strip mine? So there are, there are a lot of ifs. So let me know in the comments maybe what you would have done. Would you have used this uh, main as well like what Elon did? Or would you have waited until combat or end of turn of Clovis? Those are also options. And Clovis still has that one Flying Man, so could put uh, Elon on 10 here, but the concern, of course, is that one Factory now. There's the attack first. So Clovis on 8, Elon on 10. And we're in the second game. Clovis won the first game. So if he can win this, he's going to continue to the finals. The winner of this match will go uh, to the finals. So there's a lot at stake here. There's the pass turn. Ooh, there's a psionic blast here. On the life total of Clovis, he's going to drop to four. Does mean, of course, Elon's going to drop to eight, but he's so close. Playing with two of those uh, psionic blasts. 
Did it say Psychic Blast, by the way? It's Psionic Blast. Playing with two Psionic Blasts in his, uh, in his main. There's a factory, so he could animate Sween for three, but then still missing one damage to get him to the victory. And of course, the chances are pretty big that Clovis has a bolt or something in hand. But if he doesn't, there's the attack. What is Clovis gonna do? It looks like he's gonna fire off a bolt here. There's the bolt. Taking care of business. And now let's see. There's the pass turn. Okay, so after that Psionic Blast, I was kind of thinking, is there going to be a follow-up? Ooh, is there going to be a blast here? Oh, man. Look at that. He's on four. Elon on four. Clovis on two. This is such a close match. But it's looking so good for Clovis here. Just one attack with the Flying Man puts him on three. And then he's in chain and bolt range. Oh. Come on, Elon. I'm rooting for Elon. I want to see that third game. But I'm not sure if we're going to get there. There's the attack. It's going to go to three. Are we going to see a bolt here? Tapping two blue and the Badlands. Fireball, perhaps. Ooh, Time Twister. Wow. He's kind of Time Twister looking for, of course, some more burn. Ay, 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 ay. Wow. This is an exciting uh, ending here. The question, of course, is ending for who? If Elon finds like a Psionic Blast in his seven. And in response to a bolt or a chain lightning of Clovis, he can he can cast a Psionic Blast. He can win. Unless, of course, then Clovis has a counter spell or another bolt, right? But it's going to be really, really interesting. And remember, Clovis also has that Black Vice. That Vice alone can grant him the victory. So I think if you're Elon here, you really just need to kind of draw the nuts here. There, There is a line. He just needs to find that Psionic Blast, actually, and hope... That, that Clovis doesn't um, doesn't have anything, you know, because a bolt or a chain or a psionic blast, all those cards can give him the victory. I guess he doesn't have the mana open at the moment for a psionic blast, but a bolt or a chain gives him the victory directly and a pass turn could potentially give him the victory because he has that vice. There's a land for turn. Okay, so now he can also play psionic blast. That would uh, mean it would be a draw since Clovis is on two. And there it is, he's winning. Oh man, there we see the handshake. Nothing useful for Elon. And it's really interesting to see that Clovis is winning game number two here and winning the match basically on that one of Black Vice in his deck. So uh, yeah, it's, it's really good performance here, uh, performance here from Clovis. Congratulations to making it into the finals of the Edge Man. And if you want to see the finals, please tune back in next week because then we will be back with the finals. And if you've enjoyed this match, please leave a comment, leave a like and share this on your socials. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And before you go, if you're not a subscriber yet, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Thank you so much for doing that. And uh, one more thing that I'd like to share with you before you can uh, uh, go go away, you know, do, do your own thing. No, no, I'm just kidding. But before you, uh, you continue your journey on the internet or whatever you're gonna do today, Please take a moment to have a look at my Patreon page, patreon.com slash timmytalks, because uh, there you can find out how you can support the channel financially. And I'm so thankful to all my patrons. They, they are really the people that are keeping this channel afloat. So thank you very much, patrons, for supporting the show. Elon is actually one of the patrons as well. So thank you, Elon, for supporting the channel. And if you want to become a patron as well, check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. One of the perks is that your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll.
to Sumba Kazi.